Hey everyone, how are you doing? Boy, it has been a hectic week um, on so many levels, and I don't know how the rest of you are sleeping. I have been absolutely exhausted. Um, I feel like when I lay down to go to sleep, the energy in the astral is very tumultuous at this time. There's a lot of decisions being made, a lot of emotion being expressed and yes we can express emotions in the astral it's where we work it out and uh someone came to me and they said you know you need to say something about the difference differences in metaphysics and i thought about that and what they were saying they said you know there's buddhist metaphysics there's christian metaphysics there's muslim metaphysics and i'm going to tell you there's not there's just metaphysics, and it's the science and study of all. So it encompasses everything. The terminology, however, is very important, and that gives us our areas in which people think that it's Christian, Buddhist, or Muslim, or uh, Hindu, or Aborigine, or Indigenous. Um, it is of the earth, okay? And it is the understanding of the energies of the earth and the energies that we hold within us. Because we are light, nothing but light. The rest that we have around us, our true selves, um, are there to protect and aid our true light, our true knowing. And uh, with that being said, I know that there has been a lot of energy being dispersed throughout the uh, social media. And I wanted to say something about that, but when I went and I thought, how do I express it? I was impressed to go to some old teachings, okay? And I wrote this sermon, July 27th, 1997. That's when I gave it, actually. And it stems from the Aquarian Gospel. The Aquarian Gospel is a clarification of the New Testament. And it's not a religious mark, even though they use the words Jesus. Because Jesus is a name of consciousness. It's not the name of the person. But, you know, we're going to get into things that are going to offend people. And that's not my intention today. I'll save that for next week. So, I guess what basically I'm saying here is, is that... There is a lot of ways that we can grow spiritually. A lot of people are very determined to do it only through their spirit gifts. That makes it a little hard because you're only going to go as far as your spirit gifts are able to bring the information in. And I can tell you that you grow spiritually. Your spirit teachers grow with you and they exchange out. So they'll take you to one level and then as you clear that level of understanding, you grow to the next. So if you're the only thing you're working on is whether or not you're a good psychic, a good medium, a good healer, then that's where you're going to progress. And you want to move a little further into what we call the Christ consciousness. So I'm going to read for this sermon that I wrote years ago and see if it brings a little bit of um, help for you this next week. Like I said, it was from the Aquarian Gospel. It's chapters 44 verses 18 through 26. Now the Aquarian Gospel was done through automatic writing um, and it cleared up a bunch of the Old Testament or New Testament. I would not stay the flow of your great streams of thought, but I would turn them to the channels of the soul. Unaided by the spirit breath, the word of intellection tends to solve the problems of the things we see and nothing more. The senses were ordained to bring into mind mere pictures of the things that pass away. They do not deal with the real things. They do not comprehend the eternal law. But man has something in his soul, something that will tear the veil apart that he may see the world of real things. We call this something spirit consciousness. It sleeps in every soul and cannot be awakened until the holy breath 
becomes a welcomed guest. This holy breath knocks at the door of every soul, but cannot enter in until the will of man throws wide the door. There is no power in intellect to turn the key. Philosophy and science have toiled to get a glimpse behind the veil, but they have failed. The secret spring that throws ajar the door of soul is touched by nothing else than purity and life, by prayer and holy thoughts. Return, O mystic stream of Grecian thought, and mingle your clear waters with the flood of spirit life, and then the spirit consciousness will sleep no more, and man will know, and the God source will bless. Spirit sat in a trance that was held October 21st, 1977, and I quote, The spirit world does not observe the state of consciousness. For the mortal plane, and therefore what is solid to you is not to us. And we see, but it is not. It is like looking at a dream conceived of man, and we, of course, can move through because it's not solid to us. It is only solid if you say that it is solid and if you conceive that it is solid, end quote. In our day-to-day -day operations of living on the earth plane, the mortal mind takes control to help the spirit entity operate on this level so that we may better learn our lessons that we have set out to learn and hopefully progress to the higher levels of understanding of the Christ consciousness. Unfortunately, man allows many things of this mortal existence to interfere, and many see it. You have only one life on this earth, and if that's what you think, and that you have only to learn all that there is to know in that one lifetime, and that if you are a good person and do good works, then your reward will be that you will be allowed into the heavens to sit at God's feet. This is not so. We have led many lives on this place, and through our travels, we have come to understand reincarnation is a true realm of evolution. If you do something, you must do it correctly and to the very best of your ability. You must follow it through to its completion. What everyone understands, what they are able to understand, when it is time for them to understand it, comes with the progression of the spirit. Spiritual progression comes through the completion of each level of understanding. What we understand is what we create. If we understand the earth is round, then it is round. If we think it's flat, then it's flat, because that's how we create it. If we understand or think that financial or social status makes us a good person, then that is the only way we will conceive ourselves. So what happens if we're poor? then we are not a good person? What happens if we don't rub elbows in the highest of high societies? Does that make us a failure? Without reaching for more than that there is the, for the mortal mind to see, then that is all we will manifest. You can do the deeds, but you should try to understand there is so much more. It is your heart, your faith, and those of your associates that bring together a clearer understanding of being a part of the God source and therefore being God, holding God within and holding the Christ consciousness with it. In each of us lives the mother, father, God. And in this Aquarian age, only we have the key to unlock the mysteries hidden within. We do have mortal teachers and spirit teachers to help clarify and help us to bring forth what is within us, but each person must find the door within and open it for the holy breath to step in. It is truly a remarkable age that we are embarking on. Each mortal on this earth plane brings a different level of understanding. One person's thoughts are not wrong if they do not believe what we believe. It is just that they have a different outlook. If we look closely, their thoughts coincide with their life. If we perceive their thoughts as wrong, it doesn't make them wrong, for they are right for where they are. There are levels, view them as staircases, a perpetual climb upward. There are those on the stairs above us leading the way, and there are those behind us leading the way for others. It took a consensus of all of us when we fell from the 
sea of glass, and it will take the consensus of each of us individually to get back. I know that uh, when I talk, it's not always about giving you a reading and making you feel better or giving you direction. My work uh, as a psychic, as a medium, is to help bring you to your best you. As a teacher, it is my job, my commitment, to help you unlock your own levels of knowledge. And so it's not always fun, it's not always easy, but if you're tired of the drama that's got you going around and around and around in every circle and seeing the same stuff from your friends, from your family, from your animals, from your work, if you're seeing the same drama, something's not changing and that something is you. You're not changing your consciousness. Now, you know, we all give classes on meditation so that you can listen to that higher self, connect with that higher self to give you direction. We offer classes in intuitive development because through those gifts, we start to understand the, that we are more than just the mere mortal physical body that uh, we express in this lifetime. But it is through study and philosophies that we open the door to the mysteries. There is so much more to each individual. There is so much more to what we're going to be asked to come through. This is not going to be an easy time, and I'm not here to tell you that the next year or two is going to be easy. It's not. And how you deal with it and how you go through it and what you gather from it is going to depend on your level of awareness, your own spiritual progression. Now, I know many people that say, oh, I know everything because I've been taught everything. Well, you're right. That's perfect for where you're at. But if you think that there is something more, that there is more information that you would like to help bring ease and comfort and material uh, gain in your life. If you think that, gosh, you're sick and tired of, of fighting with friends and family, if you think that you're just done and you want to open up to something more, then you can do that too. That's when you open up. That's when you take in those moments that are very powerful. Now, it's real easy for us to say that, golly gee, I'm going to go to my psychic and get a reading because I want to know if I'm going to get a, a raise. But if you raise your level of consciousness, you're going to get that raise because you're going to make it happen. You're going to understand how to create it. You're going to understand how to be accountable, and you're going to understand that karma is not a bitch and it's not going to be some payback for you to get at your ex or them to get at you and you're not paying for some ultimate sin in which you've done wrong unless that's the way you think it. So I'm going to offer while this world is in turmoil, especially here in America, and we're struggling with consciousness and we're struggling with why it's going to happen and who's going to get sick and who's going to uh, protest and what's going to happen and is there war coming and if that's what you want to create, then that's what you're going to see. But there's ways of not seeing that and not dealing with it. And those ways are by changing how you see your world and how you see yourself. If you're interested, you can always touch base. I'm going to be opening up um, some study groups on the philosophies. Um... I think it's really important now because I think everybody has taken up the challenge of understanding their own spiritual gifts of healing, of psychic, of mediumship, but we need to step our game up a little bit more and we need to step our game up into the philosophy so that we can put it to work, so that we can help other people. And if you're part of that, then get in touch with me. 
If that's not something you're ready for yet, come when you're ready. But understand that there are many teachers out there teaching many things, and the philosophies are going to open your eyes up to a bigger and better you. So from my heart to yours, I love all of you. You have a wonderful day. Blessings to each. My heart to yours. I will talk with you soon. See you next Friday.